Hey YouTube, Brandon Ascari here with Ascari Digital's Content Creator Academy. Today, before we get started with the episode on different types of cuts that you're going to do in post-production, I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of my family, my little fur baby. Her name is Sushi. Let's go say hi. Say hi, Sushi. Oh, you're such a good girl, huh? Are you daddy's little baby? Say hi. Say hi. You want to give kisses? Oh, daddy loves kisses. Daddy loves kisses. Oh, you're a good girl. You got to help daddy with the intro. You ready? <laughs> Don't kid me. Give the intro. You ready? Sushi. And we're going to cut to the intro. You ready? <laughs> like that. Like that. <laughs> like that. What do you think? Huh? What do you think? Oh, that's my shirt. That's my shirt. Daddy loves you. Daddy loves you. <laughs> Who's a good girl, huh? Who's a good girl? Say hi. And you ready for the intro, Sushi? And welcome back everybody. So let's start talking about the types of cuts that you're going to be doing when you're in post-production. You could do this in Premiere Pro or any other editing software of your choice, really doesn't make a difference. The first cut and also most basic that we're going to be talking about is the hard cut. Now your hard cut is simply just making a cut right in your video and switching from one scene or angle to the other without any other transition or anything like that. Very simple. The next cut that we're going to be talking about is the jump cut. Now you may see this in my YouTube show all the time, but it's very popular in other vlogs, YouTube shows, and less commonly used in feature length narrative work and documentary. But usually you'll use this jump cut to get rid of a little gap where there's something you don't want to hear. So maybe the subject says uh or um all the time or something like that and you want to get rid of that just to make them sound more cognizant in what they're saying. So you would use the jump cut to remove the section that you want to get rid of, not showing a different angle or b-roll or anything like that and it just appears like oh maybe they moved a little bit so it'd be like and that little jump that you see there would be indicative of a jump cut. Then we're going to be talking about L and J cuts. Now your L cut is where you see new video but still have the old audio for an extended period of time before the audio switches over to the sound that was recorded with the new image that you saw. The J cut is the exact opposite. It's where you hear the new audio but still have the old video before transitioning to the video that's linked with that audio. This is very popular and one of the most common ways to enhance dialogue editing in a narrative scene. The reason for this is it allows you to use reaction shots where you'll see somebody else's face while the other person's talking, whether it's before or after utilizing these L and J cuts. Very popular and good ways to do this because they always say acting is reacting. And we believe the same thing in editing and what the audience sees, where you want to focus on how somebody feels about what somebody's saying instead of always focusing on the person who's saying it. And these L and J cuts are an amazing way to do that. So definitely make sure that when you can, you're utilizing these as best as possible. So cutting on action is the next one that we're going to be talking about. And this one is so valuable when it comes to getting like a fluid transition for your scene or your angle to go into the next scene or angle. Basically what cutting on action means is you start a movement on the one shot and then you finish the movement on the other. So for instance, if we had two angles of somebody sitting down in a chair, you may have that person, you know, stand up, start to sit down from one angle, and then in the other one, they'll finish sitting down. So you could use these to cut together the movement of an action by cutting in the middle of it so that way the action starts in one angle and finishes in the other. That helps to really hide the cut and make the transition seem as smooth as it possibly can be. 
The next one is going to be cross-cutting, also known as parallel editing. This is where you are cutting back and forth between two different scenes that are happening at the same time. So for instance, if your protagonist was in one location doing something, and your antagonist was in another location doing something else, instead of finishing the entire scene with the protagonist, and then cutting and finishing the entire scene with the antagonist, what you would do is cut back and forth as the scenes progress for either subject, so that way you're showing more action back and forth, you know, running around, oh, what's the protagonist, oh, what's the antagonist doing, oh man, they're doing something else, oh man, they're doing something else, and you're back and forth and back and forth, and that helps to make things have an energy to it when you're editing. So always try to keep in mind any of these techniques that you could do, whether it's cutting on action to make them seem more fluid, using the cross cutting or parallel editing to go back and forth between two different scenes, using the L and J cuts to help you show reaction shots and add a little spice to your editing, or just using the hard cut to simply just boom, that's it, like Michael Haneke, just you're done. You're going to the next scene now. You don't have a choice, sorry or even the jump cut to take out, you know, some of those words that, uh, um, editing, yeah, uh, take that out, just jump it so that way it doesn't sound so bad, and then all of a sudden you sound like you could string a sentence together, I don't know, I never can, so that's always a problem, and that's why there's jump cuts in my videos, because I don't always get it out so perfectly. But that talks about the majority of them. Then you also have your cutaway shots, also known as B-roll. These help you as much as you possibly can when you want to hide certain things. Usually we would use this to hide a jump cut because we don't want it to just jump like that in the edit. So what we would do is use a B-roll shot or a cutaway shot because that would allow us to take a shot of something else that is sort of related to the scene, but maybe a shot of my phone or a shot of my Pelican case that holds my SD cards, or we cut to a shot of a clock, or a shot of fingers tapping on a desk, or whatever, to take you away from the main subjects, usually to hide something. That's generally what it's there for, so you have that option as well. <laughs> Last but not least, we have a match cut. Now the match cut is going to be where you take an object that's moving in a certain way, and then cut to a different object that's moving in a similar way. So for instance, you could throw a frisbee up in the air and it's moving like this. And then you could cut to maybe a helicopter or an airplane that's moving like this and it completes the movement. So it's almost like combining cutting on action with switching to a different shot of something else that completes the movement for you or carries on in that same movement. This is another way to help you transition from one scene to another. It could also be somebody goes to grab a door handle, turns the handle, and then in the other scene somebody else opens up a door. And that helps transition from one scene into the next. So utilizing all of these techniques and putting them together in one big beautiful edited film or project will help you get something that creates its own life and its own energy in post-production and definitely something that you need and must take advantage of. So if you have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below. Please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell so you could be the first of all your friends and family to see our episodes when they air live Mondays and Wednesdays at 5 p.m. Give us a big thumbs up if you haven't already. And don't forget to share the video with all your friends and family around the world. In the meantime, my name is Brandon Ascari from Ascari Digital's Content Creator Academy, where as you know, it is my goal to educate and inspire you to being the best and most successful freelancer that you could be. And I will see ya.